Welcome to our new program about science, about creation, about creationism, about evolutionism, hosted by Alpha Omega TV. Our guest uh, today is again Mr. John Mackay, geologist, international director of Creation Research Australia. Welcome. Welcome back to you too. Glad to see you again. Thank you. Six days or six. 6,666,666 millions of years. Mm -hmm. Could you help us please, and I hope um, together with uh, our listeners, our viewers, could you help us sort this out? It's, it's either this one, either the other one. I don't usually get it stated that directly. Normally the average person out there or theologian would say, but surely God could have used millions of years or the days in Genesis could be vast periods. That's normally how I get it phrased. Um, that's what you're getting at in the end. Now, why do people have a problem? Well, the answer is very simple. In fact, if you turn to Exodus chapter 20 <coughs> and verse 11, which I'm sure you're familiar with, but it brought the light to one statement that uh, one of my opponents in a debate raised. He said the choice is either six days or six billion years. There's nothing in between. So we know he got the six billion years from his scientific thinking, but where did he get the six days from? Exodus chapter 20, verse 11, please. Exodus chapter 20, <clears throat> verse 11. For in six days the Lord made heaven and earth, the sea and all that is and all that in them is, and the rest of the seventh day were for the Lord blessed the seventh day and hallowed it. Okay, so that's where he got the six days from. Yes, exactly. So the six days are in the Ten Commandments. They're also in Genesis chapter 1. Now, from your knowledge, going to a college, a Bible college, a mm -hmm. theological college, who did God give the Ten Commandments to? To Moses. Okay, so in the writings of Moses, we read about six days of creation. Now, it was a bit of a surprise to me when I had to give a lecture at Cambridge University in England a couple of years back, um, and I'd also debated Dr. Trevor Emmett from Cambridge, a geologist there, and uh, I found it very interesting as I dug out the original books on geology to discover something fascinating. Number one, all the first geologists were mostly theologians who literally believed in six days of creation not all that long ago, and most of the present-day geologists believe in billions of years. How could one turn into the other? Well, it boils down to one book, and it was written by Charles Lyell in the 1830s. He's, um, you know, a, a British person, and um, he wrote a book called Principles of Geology. Now, whilst in that book he comes up with a principle that most of us use without even thinking about, he thought about it very, very deeply. The principle is called the present is the key to the past, or uniformitarianism. Uh, and we now use it this way. Whatever carbon-14 is doing, it's always done. Whatever uranium is doing, it's always done. Whatever light is doing, it's always done. Now, sounds so obvious to us, and yet Charles Lyell had to write a book about it which changed the whole way geologists thought. Now, nothing radical there, but what was radical was that I managed to get a hold of the letters that Charles Lyell had written and his sister published two years after his death. And unfortunately, they're in the reprints of some of the new editions of the, um, his Principles of Geology. Quote, unquote, what was his aim? To free science from Moses. How could a book on geology get rid of Moses? You remember we read from Moses? In six days God created the heavens and the earth. Why would his principle, the present is the key to the past, do that? Why would it result in a world where we have six billions of years in most people's heads and they know the Bible's got a story about six days of creation even if they don't know much else about the Bible? Well, it turns out to be very simple. You're a theologian, correct? Yes, I do. Okay. You're not an astronomer, you're not a physicist? No. Nope. You're not a biologist or a geologist? No. Okay, tell me from your memory. The world described in Genesis, what's it like? Is it the same as now? No, it's not. 
What was different? Uh, well, that world was very good. Uh huh. Did the roses have thorns? No, it, they didn't. They didn't. Uh, could you die of anything? Nope. There was no disease? Nope. No sickness? Nope. Ah, it was a different world. Very different. Ah. Is the present, therefore, the key to the past? No, it's not. Ah, in Genesis, do we read about rain coming? Uh, no. But when did rain come then? Uh, well, we read about the first rain uh, in Genesis uh, about 6-7. Okay, so the, the story of Noah, yep. right? So yep. up until Noah's day, there's no rain mentioned. A no. mist rose up every yes, day exactly. and watered the surface of the earth. So now, way uh, you go to England, it rains all the time, right? Yep. Is the present the key to the past? No, it's not again. If the Bible is true, the present is not the key to the past. Hmm. Okay, by the time you get after, Mo uh, after Noah, you find droughts, ice, snow, all of which we're familiar with now. Yeah. Now, Charles Lyell, what was his principle? Principles of geology, the present is the key to the past. Ah, who wrote Genesis? Who wrote Exodus? Moses. Moses. What was Charles Lyell's aim? To get rid of Moses from science, quote, unquote, right? Now, I wish they would have told me that when I majored in geology at university. I wish I would have known that when I used to lecture in geology for the government in Australia. Because it would have told me one thing. All of these millions and millions of years are not the result of the evidence. They're the result of the set of glasses that Mr. Lyell gave us through which we see the evidence. So when you look at the world and you say, oh, it looks very old. Well, you haven't been alive for 2,000 years. You don't even know what 2,000 years old looks like. You haven't been alive for 6 billion years. So therefore, you're looking through a set of glasses. But Charles Lyell was very subtle. He didn't bother to openly attack Christianity because it was too popular. All he did was substitute a different history for it. Want to get rid of Moses? Get rid of his key principle. The present is not the key to the past. How do you change that? The present is the key to the past. So therefore, we live in a world in which you look around and say, well, dirt is forming so slowly as the mountains erode, so you have 30 metres of dirt, must be millions of years. And stalactites are forming so slowly in the caves, wow, the world must be very old indeed. And the Bible says, uh-uh, when God made it, it had the best covering of dirt it's ever had. Right? So therefore, the first dirt didn't come as a result of rocks slowly decomposing at all. You have a world in which one moment there was no uranium, next moment there was. How dare you say that uranium has been doing its thing all the way back? No, there was once a time when uranium wasn't doing anything because there wasn't any uranium. So there's the basic reason for the conflict. Now, for those who want to think it through, um, you need to go one, one step further. The God of the Bible told Moses he made it in just six days. No doubt you read about in Genesis chapter 1, on the first day God made the heavens and the earth and the light, etc. And the second day and the third day and the fourth. And the sixth day he made man, the seventh day he rested. So Exodus 20 is a summary of what you read in Genesis. And both of them have Moses uh, as the commonly regarded author of those, those books. All right, now I've had many Christians, even some learned theologians say, couldn't those days be long periods of time? And when they say that, guess who they insult? They don't mean to, but guess who they're really criticizing? Who made the world? 